April 16, 1945. The Vistula Army Group under the command of General Heinricke, desperately resists the assault that the Red Army has just begun. Of all the units Heinricke has, General Bussey's 9th Army is the most important of all, and the one receiving Zukov's main attack. These German defenses defending the Oder River were the last chance they had to stop the Red Army before they entered Berlin. Zukov hoped that his overwhelming superiority of 7 to 1 in infantry and 6 to 1 in tanks would serve to overwhelm the Germans in just a few hours of engagement. However, the various defensive lines that Heinrichi had prepared on the Silo Hills held up well, and the battle dragged on for three days. Once the German defenses were breached, the depleted German units had to fall back in the direction that the chaotic situation allowed them to. There were some who retreated to the northwest and joined the famous General Steiner. Others retreated westward into the city of Berlin, as was the case with General Helmuth Weidling with his 56th Panzer Corps, who was later appointed commander of the defense of Berlin. Finally, there were others like General Bussey who, with the remnants of what remained of the 9th Army, retreated to the southwest. However, it was not only Zukov's first Belarusian front that had attacked at April 16, for a little further south, Konyev's first Ukrainian front had also gone on the offensive. Although Zukov's armies had been bogged down around the Silo Hills for four days, Konyev's troops had penetrated the German defenses at full speed, completely shattering the 4th Panzer Army defending that sector. Thus, Konyev's first Ukrainian front got ahead of Zukov and from the second day of the start of his offensive was already heading at full speed towards the southwest of Berlin. This caused that General Bussey found his route of retreat cut off, since the Red Army was located in the German rear. They only had contact on their northern flank with the outskirts of Berlin, which would also soon be cut off by the Soviets. Finding the remnants of the 9th Army blocked to the south of Berlin, the order they received from Hitler on April 21st was to hold their position, and establish defenses both to the east and to the west. Later they had to prepare to attack the first Ukrainian front in a western direction, and repel the attack that Berlin was suffering from the south. Clearly this was beyond the reach of Bussey's depleted troops, who after six days of intense fighting were totally exhausted, out of almost ammunition and fuel, and had lost most of their heavy equipment. Everything got even more complicated when on April 22 the Soviets cut off the road connecting the 9th Army with the Berlin garrison, leaving some 200,000 men isolated in what was known as Halby's Kessel. The territory that Bussey occupied was like an inverted triangle, about 30 kilometers wide at its top, from which it narrowed as it descended another 30 kilometers towards its southern apex. At this point Manstein's former disciple had three options. First, he could try to break through to the west and contact the forces of Wenck's 12th Army. After this, he had the option to join forces with General Wenck to attack the Soviets together, or continue to the Elba to surrender to the Americans. Without a doubt it would be a very hard march, in which they would have to fight against the Soviets who would attack them from all sides, while advancing west. There is no doubt that thousands of soldiers would be lost along the way, and those who could not walk would have to be abandoned. The second option was to head north and enter Berlin to help defend the city. This was precisely the order that Hitler had given him when Berlin had also been surrounded. Bussey knew that the city was lost and that entering the city would mean the death of most of his men in agonizing combat. Finally, General Bussey could surrender and trust the Soviets to treat his men well, but due to the ferocity of the Eastern Front, there was no guarantee that this would happen. Faced with this scenario and totally desperate, Bussey decided not to contradict Hitler and prepared to go to Berlin. However, while the 9th Army was preparing to go to Berlin, Bussey received an order from Heinricke, who we remember was his direct superior, instructing him not to go to the slaughterhouse that Berlin was going to suppose, and to try to join the Wenck's 12th Army. The prospects for such an escape were not bad, as Konyev's armies were centered in Berlin, and his main task was to surround the city and advance inland, so he had not left many troops to fight Bussey. Bussey for his part needed several days to decide what to do, until finally on April 25th he decided that he would not go to support the defense of Berlin, but would try to break the siege heading west to join the 12th Army. This three-day delay that Bussey needed to make this decision made Konyev much more settled on the ground, 
because with Berlin already surrounded, he was able to pay more attention to Halby's encirclement. Without a doubt, what Konyev wanted to protect was his rear and his supply line that ran right through where the 9th Army had to pass in its retreat. This being the situation, Bussy organized two breakout units with which to break through the enemy lines and on the 25th he began his evasion attack. After heavy fighting, the next day his escape attempt was blocked and the German vanguard units had to return to the encirclement. At the same time as this was taking place, the Soviets began to apply pressure from all directions, reducing Halby's pocket to a tenth of its original size by the 27th and 28th. We have to indicate that the situation in which the troops of the 9th Army were found could not be more painful, since he barely had food, ammunition, and medicine. To this we must add that they had to take care of tens of thousands of wounded who they could no longer attend to, since there were some 10,000 civilians with them who shared their agonizing situation. As if that were not enough, the Soviet artillery did not stop firing at them, exploding their projectiles at a certain height so that the damage was greater. On the other hand, and as we have mentioned before, the 12th Army was heading towards Berlin from the Elbe River by order of Hitler on April 23rd. It was here that the German leader devised his last strategy of the war, which briefly gave him hope while he was surrounded in Berlin. The order he issued was for the 9th and 12th Army to attack Pinzer southwest of Berlin, then head for the Reich capital and drive back the Soviets. At the same time Steiner would attack from the north, and together they would cause the Red Army its greatest defeat in the war. This gave rise to the scene that was depicted in the Downfall movie, in which Hitler is seen issuing the following telegram. So, telegraphia na Point number one. Where is Wenck's army? Point number two. When and where will he carry out his attack? Point three. Where is the Ninth Army? Point four. Where will he attack to break the Soviet siege on Berlin? The responses of Keitel, who was already out of Berlin at the time, were totally sincere and without any intention of embellishing reality. In short, he told him that neither Wenks nor Bussy's troops were going to be able to make any liberation attack on the city, and therefore all was lost. Finally Keitel asked Hitler again to leave Berlin, to which the German leader again refused. A few hours later, Hitler committed suicide. Returning now to the critical situation of the men of the 9th Army, it was clear that Bussy had to try again to get out of the encirclement and connect with Wenck, because his troops were about to be annihilated. Thus, on the 28th, Bussy summoned his main commanders to study the plan to adopt. The decision they made was to regroup their few armored forces, and soldiers who were still able to fight, and organize a last breakout attempt. Thus, during that afternoon of April 28th, the men of the 9th Army began their offensive. After intense fighting, there were some columns that managed to advance and others were stalled. During the 29th the painful march of this German column continued, suffering more and more casualties. 50 kilometers separated them from Wenck's troops, who could do nothing to try to close the distance from their positions, as they were also being attacked by the Soviets in all directions. By April 30th, the remnants of the 9th Army were 10 kilometers from Wenck, after having suffered tens of thousands of casualties between dead, wounded who had not been able to continue, and soldiers who had been taken prisoner. It was finally on May 1st that Bussy's exhausted men were able to reach Wenck, then began the march to the Elba River to surrender to the Americans. However, unfortunately for them, the Americans rejected most of these soldiers and ended up being taken prisoner by the Soviets. It is difficult to give an exact figure, but it is estimated that of the 200,000 Germans who were surrounded in the Halby pocket, only 30,000 or 40,000 reached the position of the 12th Army, with about 120,000 falling prisoner and the other 60,000 dying in the attempt. Ultimately only a few thousand were taken prisoner by the Americans, the vast majority falling into Soviet hands. Well, so far this program on the escape of the German 9th Army, in a situation of total chaos. If you want to see what happened to the other units that were north of Berlin, and that were commanded by the famous Steiner, I leave you the program in the description. Thank you all for being a part of this community, and especially the sponsors who make this possible. Subscribe and share this program if you liked it, and we'll see each other again here as always, next Thursday and Sunday.
See you soon.